All right, I'm going to talk about, um, I'm going to introduce you to privacy as contextual integrity, but I wanted to give you a little bit of the rationale of why, why we need a different type of concept of privacy. First of all, um, <clears throat> I come to this with a sense that many scientists and particularly maybe data scientists see privacy as antithetical to science. Uh, normally, you have privacy protocols for creating and extracting and collecting data from and about humans involving informed consent based on the notion of privacy as control, or for sciences data brokers and reusers and data scientists of various stripes, the answer might be data sanitization through perhaps anonymization or differential privacy. Now, it's been quite difficult to do both of those things. And I suspect that many people who are here today are aware of all the different challenges, the inconvenient truth, if you will, that notice and choice remains a fool's errand. And um, something I call the transparency paradox prevails. It's really a dilemma. Um, and I discussed this in a 2011 Daedalus paper, which argues that notice the informing part of informed consent could either be comprehensible or it could be uh, or it can be sufficiently informative, but it can't be both. And you know, I want you to even think about something like the in amazing work Jeff has been doing to try and imagine explaining that sort of thing to people who are entering some kind of study. And certainly we're no closer to being able to sanitize data in order to justify practices that I learned, the, this phrase I learned from Paul Ohm, the release and forget approach to sharing or making data available. So if, you're, if you have empiricists in this audience listening to me, um, who wonder why it took so long in history to overthrow geocentricism or flat earth understandings of the earth, with all the evidence that was mounting, that's how I feel about this notice and choice or informed consent approach to regulating privacy. Now, we know that these frustrations with privacy um, will lead data scientists, and I'm using this term very, very generically to include computational social sciences and demographers and so forth, um, to seeing privacy, well, we can't do those things. So privacy is just an annoyance. And you often hear these, see these phrases, you must have the privacy utility trade-off. And I suspect that you've encountered this privacy utility trade-off countless times. And I, I actually can't believe that the privacy, that the scientific community would even line up against this idea. Imagine if we did this, the ethics utility trade-off. Oh, ethics, such a bother. Let's just do this ethics utility trade-off. And I think that in my view, what this privacy utility trade-off suggests is a misunderstanding of what privacy is and what it means to respect privacy. And my alternative here is achieving privacy as contextual integrity. And contextual integrity answers two questions. What is privacy and why privacy is important and worth defending? Not just an obstacle that you have to get over in order to do the good stuff. There's tons of <laughs> articles and books and lots of collaborators, including Fraka, who have been really, and, and I don't know who else is on this call. So it's a, it's a bit of a difficult task to cover it all in, in my three and a half remaining minutes. But I want to reduce contextual integrity in, down to three key ideas. One is that privacy is appropriate flow. Two, in order to understand privacy implications, you have to characterize the flows of whatever you're doing with the data in terms of five parameters. And three, you have to establish that these flows can be ethically justified. Now, the five parameters that 
contextual integrity proposes are subject, you have to be able to identify the subject, the sender, the recipient, the information type, and the transmission principle. And you have to wrap your head around this notion of a context. And all I'm gonna say is that we social theorists often think about society as different occurring in lived in differentiated social spheres, nothing fancy. And I wanna put scientific research as one of these spheres. And they, and they are defined in terms of their purposes. So healthcare is def may be defined in terms of alleviating suffering, curing diseases and so forth, and certain values that we do this equitably. And there are also norms that govern these contexts, including informational norms. And these are fundamental to contextual integrity, which proposes five parameters that, that are required in order to assess whether a given practice conforms with contextual integrity or not. And when you describe these flows and provide values for the parameters, you need to do so in terms of the capacities in which the parties are acting and in terms of the contextual ontologies. Now, when you're looking at the data flows, keep in mind that there are multiple ways to constrain data flows. And the problem with privacy as control is that it reduces everything to a transmission principle of control. Everything and anything hangs on this. And that is, is, is not correct. According to contextual integrity, we need to evaluate flows in terms of how they serve contextual functions and purposes. And that means promoting certain ends and purposes of the particular context. For scientific research, I'm just guessing these things. It's not for me to say, it's for the scientists to say. So when we ask the question, and I wanna, uh, uh, and, I, and I've, I've just flown through and happy to answer questions. What is privacy and why privacy is important and worth defending? We have to answer, privacy's appropriate data flow. And why is privacy important and worth defending? Because it protects individuals against harm and it promotes societal and contextual purposes and values. 